Well, the United Nations now sounding off on a warning that the world is on the edge of a recession and developing nations like those in Asia could bear the brunt of it. This comes as economists are worried that President Biden's excessive policy choices could be the trigger for an economic downturn even worse than the 2008 recession. Here to discuss, CEO of Patriot Gold Group, Jack Handy. Jack, I saw that there's a survey that 91% of CEOs right now think over the next 12 months we're going to have a recession. We've also got numbers out today saying there are 1.1 million fewer job openings this month than, the, well, in August. It could be even worse now. Uh, so we're seeing these trends that there could be a real problem in the economy. And some people say we're already in one. We had two negative uh, prints on the GDP. What, where do you think we stand? Where's this going? Well, Vanguard and Deutsche Bank also forecast a 65 percent of a recession uh, in 2023. The U.N. has demanded that all central banks stop rate hikes. Uh, the real implications and the carnage we'll see in 2023 of these rate hikes in 2022, when companies and corporations start reporting earnings, and you know what this is doing right now, not only to the real estate market but to the stock market as well, uh, we are barreling towards a recession here in 2023. Yeah, let's talk about Elon Musk. He made some headlines today saying, "Hey." Maybe I will take over Twitter after all for, in the original uh, agreement. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? And, and let me ask the political question also. Will this affect uh, conversations politically that go on social media? This is a huge development uh, with serious implications because it's taking Twitter from a publicly traded company to a privately owned company. So it'll really open the doors for free speech, political debate which, you know, Elon Musk said free speech is really the bedrock of a democracy. So I really do believe ahead of the midterms because he could take over as early as the end of this week. And it really will open up Twitter to be a platform for free speech. OK, let's talk about gold. You know, you always say that when you have a lot of inflation, gold is a good hedge. Uh, in times of uncertainty, gold's a good hedge. We've got it over 1,700 points, but it hasn't gone to, you know, you always hear how it's going to go 2,000, 2,500 or whatever it is. We haven't seen that. Uh, what are your thoughts about the gold itself as an investment right now? We look over the past two days, and especially in anticipation of the jobs report, which is this Friday, as you had mentioned, the September jobs report, gold has surged the most in the past two days than it has in six months since March of 2022. So we now see gold above 1,700. Silver was up over 10% yesterday alone. Yeah, so, so let me ask you where this all goes. For the average person that's paying more now, uh, at least 25% more now for the energy, for their the heating their homes than they were a year ago, 12% uh, at the very least for food. Uh, depending on what you buy, it could be a lot more than that. When are people going to see that somehow coming back down? We know that the rising interest rates are having mortgage rates go up and, and, and you know, the rates of everything you want to borrow going up. But is inflation coming back down? The Fed rate hikes haven't been really doing anything to combat inflation because that's a supply chain issue. That's a productivity issue. It's not due to the rate hikes. It's due to also the ultra loose monetary policy by the Fed having printed over five trillion dollars. So really what we're looking at right now is these interest rate hikes. I mean, they are just yeah, wreaking havoc on the stock market. The average stock in the Russell 3000 is down 41.7 percent. Wow. The Nasdaq's down over 30 percent on the year. Meanwhile, gold is only down about 6 percent on the year. So it's done a good job acting as a hedge against inflation and a safe haven asset. All right, Jack Haney, thank you so much, sir. Bob, thank you for having me.